We're going to be reading from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. And you'll find that on page 1075 in your pew books. One thousand and seventy five, one Peter chapter one, verse three. Uh, so this corresponds with the uh, with the book. All right, one Peter chapter one, verse three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Uh, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we have come to the climax of our Two Ways to Live series, uh, the pinnacle of Jesus' work and the hope of our faith. Uh, this morning we are going to be spending some time looking at the resurrection. Uh, what is it? Why is it important? And what does it mean for us, uh, both uh, past, present, and future? It's an area of faith that is sometimes been overlooked and sometimes been misunderstood. Uh, in many ways, the resurrection of Jesus is the shibboleth of our faith. Uh, the New Testament writers focused much of their time recording and defending the resurrection. Uh, so, as we Look into this wonderful and unsurpassed moment in history. Uh, let's come before God in prayer, asking for his assistance. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Uh, thank you that it documents uh, Christ's resurrection. Uh, thank you that uh, the writers who penned uh, the New Testament uh, spent so much time and energy thinking about the resurrection and that we can be blessed through their writing that you inspired. I pray that you would help us understand this more fully and then as a result we would live our lives uh, to greater service of you. Amen. Uh, well, I'm going to have a go of this. Uh, we'll see how it goes. There's a lot of verses that we're going to try and cover. Um, I don't know if my sermon will be as, as dense as Bernard's. Uh, I think he takes the cake for that one. But we'll see how we go. Uh, well, I'm sure you've heard the stories. People returning from the dead. Uh, I was reading a news article this week in which doctors discussed rare cases uh, in which patients, having been declared medically dead, uh, revived. Uh, they subsequently went on to recover. Uh, these stories are not common, but it does happen. Uh, this morning we are looking at the resurrection. Is it like what the doctors were discussing? Uh, is it merely moving from death to life, coming back to life? As we look at the resurrection, uh, it's helpful to break it down into two aspects. Uh, firstly, Christ's resurrection and secondly, the general resurrection, our own resurrection. Uh, so the two are linked, but Christ's naturally comes first. Uh, last week, Bernard unpacked the fourth box in the Two Ways to Live uh, series. Jesus died in our place as a substitute and propitiation. Uh, two big words. Essentially, it means that Jesus took our place and stood between us and the just wrath of God. Now, Jesus was both the justifying agent and the justifier. He was the perfect God-man that we needed. Now, it's at this point we sometimes stop. Now, we say, Jesus has died on the cross to pay for my sin, and now I live with Jesus as my Lord and Saviour. I wonder if you've ever heard someone say that, or maybe you've caught yourself saying that. Now, not technically wrong, but it's a little bit anemic. Uh, if we leave it at that, uh, we are missing the other part of the core message of the Christian faith. It would be like having Batman without Robin. It would be like having Chicago without the Bears, Han without Chewie, 
Uh, and as, as close an analogy as I can find, it would be like having Woody without Buzz. You can't have the wood of the cross without blasting off to infinity and beyond. Now, the resurrection is a, if not the, defining doctrine of the Christian faith. The Apostle Paul gives a clear promise. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now, for Paul, the resurrection was paramount. Uh, but what is the resurrection? Uh, the resurrection is not just moving from death to life. Uh, if it was simply that, uh, it's not unheard of. Uh, it's happened many times before in the Bible. Uh, here are just a few examples. Uh, 1 Kings 17, uh, a widow's son dies. She brings the boy to Elijah and says, can you help? Uh, Elijah lies on the body three times and prays to the Lord that his life might come back. And the Lord grants Elijah's prayer. And the boy is revived. Uh, 2 Kings 13, uh, it is a much stranger story. I encourage you to read it. Uh, long after Elijah has died, he's dead, he's buried, his bones are in the tomb. Uh, a man also dies, and on the way to the burial, uh, the grave diggers are just about to bury him. Uh, some raiders come by, they're scared, they drop the body. The body rolls into the grave of Elijah touches his bones, and the man comes back to life. It is a, an odd resurrection story. Uh, New Testament, Luke 7, uh, again, another widow's son during the funeral procession. Uh, Jesus meets the procession, uh, goes up to the son, and raises him to life. Luke 8, Jairus' daughter, Jairus comes to Jesus and says, "'Can you help? My daughter is sick.'" Jesus, on the way, uh, gets waylaid, and in the meantime, a servant comes and says, don't bother the master, she's dead. But Jesus says, no, that's okay, I'll go. He goes into the room, gets everyone out, goes to the daughter, takes her hand and says, little girl, wake up, and she comes back to life. And so it's not unprecedented that someone will go from death to life. Uh, maybe a more familiar story, John 11. Uh, Lazarus has been unwell. Jesus hasn't gone to see him. Uh, Lazarus dies, and it's been a number of days since Jesus um, is able to get there. Jesus purposefully doesn't arrive in time. M Martha says, Jesus, had you have been here, you could have helped. Uh, Jesus says to her, your brother will rise again, Jesus told her. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even though he dies, will live. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Now, it's almost at this point we could stop the sermon and just leave uh, with Jesus' words hanging. Do you believe this? Because a lot rides on that answer. Uh, this last example is important, as uh, our book uh, explains, uh, the uh, Learn the Gospel book that we've been going through. It shows more about the resurrection than we normally think. Martha is aware of the resurrection of the dead, a time when, at the last day, I think judgment day, everyone will rise. Jesus expands Martha's understanding by claiming that he is the resurrection and the life. The resurrection is more than just moving from death to life. It is a time of judgment. During the episode with Martha and Lazarus, Jesus is claiming to be the one who will judge and declare life. In Jesus' rising, he is not just receiving back his previously ruined, broken, physical body, but rather was transformed. He underwent a renewal of his original body, a physical body that is now fully glorified 
and deathless. His body still uh, still bears the scars of the crucifixion. Uh, in both Luke and John, he says to his disciples, touch my hands, look at my feet, feel where the spear went in. He says, even come and eat with me. Have you got any fish? Can a ghost do that? Now, his is a body that will never again taste death. For in his resurrection, he destroyed the power of death. In Jesus' resurrection, he takes on the office of judge and ruler. Uh, Peter, in his sermon at Pentecost, having walked through the Old Testament, shows that Jesus was the promised ruler that God would send. And at the end of his sermon, he declares that, therefore, let all the house of Israel know that with certainty that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Lord and King. Lord and Judge. In the same way, in Acts 17, uh, Paul links the coming judgment of the world with a person. He says, God now commands all people everywhere to repent because he has set a day when he is going to judge the world in righteousness by the man he has appointed. And he has provided proof to this to everyone by raising him from the dead. This, like Steve said, is good news. Jesus, the one who stood in our place and died for us, has now become the one who will judge us, not because of anything that we have done, but because of what he did. And so, box five of Two Ways to Live sums it up this way. God raised Jesus to life again as the ruler and judge of the world. Jesus has conquered death, now brings forgiveness and new life, and will return in glory. The resurrection is more than just moving from death to life. It was a confirmation that Jesus was who he said he was. He claimed to be able to forgive sin, to have the power over death, that he was God's anointed ruler and judge. His perfect life and willing death showed the lengths to which God would go to rescue his people. And his resurrection proves his claim. And so why is the resurrection so important? Point two on your outline. Well, to put it bluntly, as we heard earlier, without the resurrection, we are still in our sins and condemned to death. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You are still in your sins. Now, Paul, in chapter 15, is laying the foundations of the gospel. He said, you can't have the death of Jesus without the resurrection. At the start of chapter 15, Paul gives the gospel in a nutshell. Uh, Memory verse for you. Here we go. For I passed on to you as most important what I received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. So Jesus was Jesus died, was buried, raised for our sins according to the scriptures. Now Paul is saying here that if there is no resurrection, we are still condemned in our sins. We are still under judgment of God and there is no hope beyond the grave. And so we cannot neglect or just assume the place of the resurrection. History is marked by the events of the cross and the resurrection. There was before and there is after. No other moment has had a greater impact on human history or on our salvation than Jesus' resurrection. It's worth taking time this week to ponder the resurrection and reflecting on its impact how it shapes our daily walk with Jesus. We've got only got a few weeks until Easter. Maybe take the next few weeks to think about what the resurrection means. Now, don't just celebrate 
the resurrection on Easter Monday. Every Sunday should be Resurrection Sunday, where we come and gather and celebrate the resurrection. Well, point three we've, uh, on your outline, we've seen how the resurrection is more than just going from death to life. Uh, that Jesus' resurrection was confirmation that he was God's anointed judge and ruler, and that without the resurrection, we are still in our sins. So what does the resurrection mean for us? Why is it so, why is it such good news? Uh, well, I wonder if you have heard these words. And if you haven't, I wonder if you can pick where they're from. We come together to mourn a relative, to honor a departed friend, to dispose reverently of the mortal body, and to show sympathy with the bereaved. We believe that those who die in Christ share eternal life with him. Therefore, in faith and hope, we offer our prayer of thanksgiving and trust to God, in whose care we leave our friend. We recall the certainty of our own coming death and judgment, and we proclaim that Christ is risen, that those who believe in him will rise with him, and that we are united with them in him. Now, these words come from the Anglican book of prayer, and they are spoken at a funeral. Uh, I spoke these words only last week uh, to mourners. Because of our rejection of God going our own way, the world in which we live is subject to death and decay. Uh, We learnt about that in weeks two and three, sin and judgment. And yet... All throughout those weeks, there is hope. The resurrection of Jesus changes everything for both those who are in Christ and for those who reject Christ. Uh, We will spend more time on this next week as we look at the choice we all face to accept or reject Christ as ruler and judge. But for those in Christ... Now, brothers and sisters here this morning, the resurrection has both past, present, and future implications, and they are wonderful. Now, so past implications. Now, from Romans 6 verse 9, now, we know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Now, we have a saviour and a judge who can never die again. Uh, Romans 1, Jesus' resurrection demonstrates to the whole universe his deity, that he is God. Jesus was declared to be the Son of God in power, according to the spirit of holiness, by his resurrection from the dead. And thirdly, Jesus' resurrection purchases our justification. Uh, I've spent a bit of time mulling over this this week, and it's not something that I had thought much of before. Uh, We often think we are forgiven and justified in Christ's death, but Paul makes it clear that it was in his resurrection we are justified before God. He was delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification. Uh, One one, uh, writer notes that without this wonderful truth, that when he rose, Jesus was declared righteous before God. We cannot grasp the joy of salvation. Jesus was our obedience substitute during his life, our punishment substitute in his death, and our rebirth substitute in his resurrection. What does the resurrection mean for us today, the here and now? For those who have placed their trust in Jesus, there is no condemnation. So who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is the one who died, but even more was raised. He also is at the right hand of God interceding for us. We have a great high priest who cannot die and who is before God right now interceding for us. Now, we have the same spirit in us that, that raised Jesus from the dead. 
Uh, Romans 8, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also bring your mortal bodies to life through his spirit who lives in you. Um, this week, thinking about that, that kind of, it just blows my mind that the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in me, uh, lives in us. Uh, maybe that's a sermon series for 2025. Uh, last one, and our key passage for today, we have a new birth into a living hope. A praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, Peter outlines that because of Jesus' resurrection, we have an unshakable hope, a hope for life beyond the grave because Jesus has gone before us. Now, the foundation of this hope is God's great mercy. Now, Peter reminds us that there is nothing that we bring uh, that can contribute to our salvation. It is God's gift of grace that has brought us into his family. Our living hope is through Jesus' resurrection, nothing that we do. Our future looking ahead. Our faith in Jesus and his resurrection should bring us great comfort and assurance. Uh, so, Acts 17, uh, God has fixed a time when Jesus will return to judge all people, both living and dead, the righteous and the unrighteous, and call all to account. And he has pr provided proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. Uh, there is a time when all will be judged, and that is a good thing. God will not let uh, injustice go unpunished. At that time, we wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. We have one who is ready to rescue us from the coming wrath. And lastly, we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus. We have that assurance of our own resurrection. And so just after that, Paul goes on to say, Therefore we do not lose heart, even though outwardly we are wasting away, inwardly we are being renewed day by day. We are being renewed day by day, and at our resurrection we will be renewed completely. As followers of Jesus, we do not grieve as those who have no hope, but rather trust in God, who is faithful to his promises. As Jesus rose physically with a glorified body from the grave, so too we will be raised with physical bodies. Our bodies in this life will decay and eventually we will die. Uh, maybe mock as you will, but even in my early 30s, I am starting to feel this. I'm getting a taste of what it's like. Uh, I get tired easy. I'm starting to not recover as quickly and things that used to work well don't. I don't heal as quickly as I used to. It will be a wonderful day when we no longer feel the effects of sin in our bodies, when death and disease are no longer. Now, God has given us assurance that our bodies will be renewed and glorious just as Jesus' is. On that day, God's work in our lives will be complete and we will be fit for the purpose of glorifying and praising Jesus forever. That is a day worth longing for. And we can long for that day because of the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus has been made both judge and the one who will save us from judgment. We can have confidence in our own resurrection because God is rich in mercy, and because Jesus, our elder brother, has gone before us. Let's pray. Now, Heavenly Father, you promise us life after death. You promise that uh, 
these broken and sinful bodies will be renewed to glorious bodies and we will be able to be, uh, we will be fit uh, for the purpose of glorifying and praising you forever. And we thank you for Jesus, uh, that he is uh, our example. Uh, he has gone before us uh, and he has paved the way for us. And so we praise him and glorify him. Uh, Heavenly Father, we long for the day uh, when all things will be made right uh, and we will be able to stand in your presence, uh, unblemished and without sin. Uh, Heavenly Father, we long for that day. And so we ask uh, for Jesus to return. It would be uh, a wonderful experience uh, to stand before you uh, with those throughout history who have placed their trust in you. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen.